Hi students, Mr. C here at the wood shop. I'd like to talk to you about the CNC and setting up or the pre-working of the machine or the, the, the pre-operation of the machine and what you should be checking for before you go ahead and turn on the machine so that way we can always get the results that we're looking for. Now first thing is, is the machine and the controller are off at this time and I don't want to do any of this while power is being delivered this and it can start up inadvertently. So the first thing I want to do is, is I want to come over here and I have my air pressure monitoring system here and what I want to do is, is I want to make sure that the PSI is correct and also I always want to open up this valve just a little bit just to make sure that we do not have any water in the system and as you can see there was none that came out. We do have on this machine a dedicated desiccant to remove any water that was in the airline system and we have a dryer as well kind of like doing double duty because what we're looking for is, is to prevent the spindle from being destroyed. If you happen to have water in your airline and it happens to go to your spindle it will destroy the inside of the whole spindle and you're just going to have to throw it out and unfortunately that's going to cost you a significant amount of money. So being that we're a school district we really can't do that okay. So I've made sure that first is the air pressure is right and there is no water in the lines before I go ahead and turn on the machine. Now a few things I would like to talk about are the different, the, the linear bearings and how we have all these different uh, places where we have grease fittings. Now on each one of these linear bearings I have a grease fitting and they were just done. I have some more on here and here. We have some on the back here and as we have some of the other parts of the machine but basically I'll go through these individually with you the very first time you have to clean or prep the machine. We don't have to, to grease the bearings every single time we use them. We do have to do this I would say about once a month in this under the amount of uh, time that this machine is running. Okay so all the grease fittings have been hit. One thing I also want to check for is that the rails, these rails have been wiped off and they're clean of debris and then also we have to make sure that this this um, railing here that the servo goes on is riding us clear and free of debris. We want to make sure that that is clean and we're not going to get anything hung up inside while we're running our machine. Okay? If we do this, just a general wipe down some of these things just before we start the day we were going to find that, that our product ends up superior and we're going to have less maintenance issues down the road. So the next thing I want to do is, is I'm going to have my camera guy come on over here and I want to talk to you about the vacuum press itself or the vacuum system. In here we have to have the vacuum pump is underneath here, okay? I have to remove these four hand screws. This doesn't have to be done that often. Um, I would say once a week as well with the amount of use that we use the CNC in here. This is not a production shop where this would have to be done on a daily basis. But I take those off. I lift my cap off. Now, to get my air cleaner out, I have to gently slide this out. Now, as you can see, it's a little tight in here. That's why the machine is off. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take a little bit of my compressed air. I'm going to blow this out. And I'm going to blow from, out, from the inside to blow the dust out. Like I said, we're going to have to do this about once a week. Now, you can see this gasket here. This should be conditioned once a week. Essentially, I just brought out the, Qu the good old Quaker State. And all I need to do is just put a little bit of motor oil on that surface. And that's going to take care of 
the conditioning of the seal because we want to make sure that we do that. And during, I guess, this COVID-19, we're pretty used to uh, taking and putting on gloves properly and taking them off. So I'm just gonna place this here for now. So I have, my air cleaner's been blown out, it's clean. I'm gonna kind of make my way back here. And then I'm gonna place this on here properly, make sure it seals. I'm gonna go ahead and get my cover. Place my cover on here. I'm gonna grab four knobs. Just gonna get them started. Now you don't have to get this a huge amount of pressure, just a couple pounds. Please don't over tighten these. So now that's all set. So now that I have my air cleaner all done, I can go ahead and I want to show you how to turn the machine on properly. So in the back here, we have this, it's a start PC and it has an arrow going this way. I go ahead and I grab my CNC key. Turn it on. And it has a spring inside, so it wants to bring it back. That's all I have to do. And then in a minute here, you're gonna see the screen go on. Okay? So now what I'd like to talk to you about is a little bit about the tooling, tool holders, and collets. So I have a series of tools here. Okay? And we happen to have, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about each one of these tools. Now, these tools right here are all different types of V-bits or engraving bits. Now, you can see like this bit right here, it's already inside of a tool holder and collet. This is a relatively large 45 degree angle. This bit will be taking out, but this one's like a dedicated 45. Then we have other types where we happen to have like this type here where when the cutter goes dull, you can remove this Allen key and replace this, this insert, which is the tip for this. This is a sign making bit. Then we have other bits that might be a little bit tighter. And these are a sign making bit. And we really like using these because of how refined the but the cut can be, this is a 12 and a half degree, but it is only in one flute. So you do have to watch your feed and speed rates, which is something that I'll address later in a different video. And then we have another one of these dedicated sign making bits. And they do come in different shapes as well as different sizes. Now this happens to be a quarter inch and this happens to be two flute. Okay. So those are different V bits that we have for this type of machine. Now, most of the time you're gonna be using straight bits and depending on what you're cutting into depends on which bit is the most appropriate for the job. Like for instance, if I'm cutting into plywood or melamine, I'm gonna to wanna to use a bit that looks like this. This happens to be three flutes to this, and this is called a compression bit. This compression bit has to run at a very high rate of speed and feed rate, and this will cut right through in typically one single pass, okay? And this has a half inch shank to it. This is another type of compression bit, but as you can see, it is only two flute. And like I was saying, different shapes and sizes, this happens to be a quarter inch compression bit as well. 
Now these bits have to be run at a very specific speed or else you can snap them very quickly and it would get quite expensive very, very quickly. So we may have to make sure we do our calculations on the feed and speed rate according to the chip load that the manufacturer specifies for each bit. Now, for instance, this end mill here, this is a three flute, but it's a little bit different. Now, here's another type of straight bit, but you'll notice it's significantly different. This bit right here has one flute to it, and it has all these facets along here. This is called a super O or an O bit. And this that happens to be the half inch shank, and this is a quarter inch shank single flute. What these are designed for is cutting in a plastic essentially, so that way you end up with a nice fine remove, uh, refined surface after you've used this. It runs at a very high RPM, at a very slow feed rate. Now we also have a different cutter that you'll see is this is called a ball nose. Okay, so it's curved and it'll allow for this to go ahead and cut rounded areas in the CNC. And you can see here that we have many different sizes and actually we even have down to a 32nd inch round nose or ball nose, depending on which manufacturer you purchase from. And here's another 